much of it against Nicholas, who decided to bring Boris Obosh. We've talked about this deck here before, but what a great deck and a fringe deck that ended up making it. And Nicholas at 11, 12, and 1 with a great score. What do you think of these decks? Yeah, so Boris Hammer, very well established deck, and I did expect a lot of Hammer. We didn't see it that much. But uh, yeah, it's clearly having success fighting for the top eight. And we've got Boros Obosh, a deck that, well, nobody knows. And so Boros Obosh is all about Blood Moons, all about mana tithing and value three drops. So we will see how this game ends. Esper Sentinel versus Ragavan. We'll see how they match up. If Ragavan gets in, it's Jonas's decision, decision whether to block or not. And from what we have seen, because I look at the, looked at the standings, I don't think it's mathematically possible for any Merc Tide to make the top eight. So, chat, are you? Would you be happy if no Merc Tide made the top eight? Can we get some Fs in chat for Merc Tide? Yeah, I, I, but I think I actually think the. Re Ooh, let's go though. Look at that Emmer. Wow. Okay, bash you for ten immediately. And now, the Obosh player has to have some, you know, not damage based removal because it won't work. And I'm not sure there is. Oh, there is Prismatic. Okay, we're good. We're good. And Nicholas suddenly, like, at seven life, drawing for the second turn. Like, okay, I'm going to start my second turn now. And definitely need something. So, yeah, so you've got two choices. You can exile the Ornithopter and leave the opponent with the hammer. You could exile the hammer and leave the opponent with the only Thopter. And so, and depends what you're playing around. Because if you leave them with the Thopter, you're dead to another equip. But if you leave them with the equip, you're probably dead to a pure sleep pardon. So that's, that's a tough choice there. And so, yeah, I think, I think our expectations with Merktite have been completely, uh, completely in a different place. You know, everybody expected, you know, half the top eight to be Merktite. Well, out of a thousand, uh, out of a hundred people playing Mercate day one, only ten qualified for day two, and out of the ten, uh, none of them converted to the top eight. At least again, we think they won't. Okay. So now we see purely pardon. So the situation I said could happen. Now, there could be a Blood Moon coming down, but Blood Moon doesn't really care about artifacts. But I guess if there were artifacts, Jonas would have already played them. So it is possible that Nicholas could feel, uh, could feel free to slam the Blood Moon. But then again... And what would Blood Moon imply here? Blood Moon imply, I don't have any interaction, and I just hope you don't, don't draw anything relevant. And just as I said it, Jonas draws... Uh, Stoneforge Mystic, which can find another hammer. I really like the Emmer deck. It's one of the most popular decks. We've talked a lot about it uh, in Modern. Recently has been one of the most popular aggro, any kind of combo-ish decks, right? Because your goal is to kind of combo-ish with the Emmer. Um, first time I got it with the Emmer, it was really rough. I didn't know the deck, and I just... Uh, was turn one, I think I was playing Merfolk, it was like my first time playing Modern, and I'm like, okay, I don't block, they put two Emmers, and I lose, and I'm like, yeah. what is this deck? Maybe because you didn't have Mana Tithe, which Nicholas absolutely did have, and Mana Tithed, uh, or Mana Toad, uh, Jonas says Stoneforge Mystic. So now, let's see what Nicholas can master. There are no fetches to find a basic plane, so if there is a Blood Moon, there won't be any white spells played probably in the nearest future. So it's a real decision for Nicholas how to navigate this game. Yeah, and Mana Tide, such a great card. Yep. I think it's one of those cards that really doesn't really go with the color of the deck that you're playing. You don't associate a card like Mana Tide with white. Yeah. Uh, but it works really well, and, it, and I like when they do that and allows uh, you to place certain colors, but still have answers that usually you couldn't have. Yeah, it certainly catch, catches people off guard, right? Like nobody expects a counter spell out of a white deck 
And uh, I mean, if you get caught by it, game one, well, you will be playing around the game two. And at that point, it might already be sided out. And Nicholas bolting Pierce to the Paladin. And now, Jonas, not with much. However, a single hammer can still get the job done if equipped to Inkmoth Nexus. And Nicholas down at three. That's scary. Oh, another pure still. But that doesn't do anything yet because there are no artifacts. So there is only the hammer. Inkmoth can turn into an artifact, but that's still two. So we are off Metalcraft. And, and why do you think uh, Nicholas chose to bring this Oboshtek here today? I think the main reason is that he has played it a lot. And I don't see any other reason. I'm not, I would be surprised if he intentionally made this deck for this tournament. I would say that he's an Obosh enjoyer. He likes red-white midrange decks. And he just said, yeah, I mean, I know this deck best. Let's play it. So we actually have Blood Moon coming down. And despite the fact that there is an Arid Mesa, which could be, which could fetch a white source, right? Going down to two, he doesn't do it. The main reason is that he would die to Pure Sleep Paladin. And there so, is yeah. the Blood Moon that you talked about. Yeah. But Nicholas is at one life. And three life. Stoneforge of the top like a professional. <laughs> <clears throat> yep. And that basic plane yeah. really coming in handy against the Yep. Oh. Cheeky. Shadow Spear is enough, right? Three three. That's enough. Giving okay. plus one plus one. Bonk, bonk. And Nicholas and is done. gone. So we are going to have here game number two. Game game one ended in seven minutes. So that's yeah. pretty quickly what we expect with these decks, right? So can we take a look here at the sideboards of our players and the deck lists? So let's take a look here to see what they can side in. So we have Azorius Hammer first. So... What do you think of this list? How is it different than other Emmer players? And what do you think of sideboard against here, the Obosh? The big question is how is Jonas familiarized with what the Obosh player is doing? And I assume the answer is not much because it's very difficult to predict what could come. He saw Bloodman uh, and wide interaction. This is probably what he's going to base his decisions off of. And basing off of them, he could play, for example, more spell piece and blacksmith skill as a protection spell. Uh, potentially sanctify on Vec uh, because he's so red and lightning bolt. But sanctify on Vec is then on the flip side pretty pretty bad against no prismatic ending, leyline binding, uh, and other stuff. Okay, leyline binding isn't to be expected from a blood moon deck, but prismatic ending absolutely. Maybe march of other world light. So I think spell piece, blacksmith skill, and maybe like Barrington Forge tender potentially. And let's hear uh, the sideboard for our other player, Boros Temple, also known as Boros Obosh here. Uh, what do you think of this list? Yeah, I, so the list, beautiful. Absolutely <laughs> beautiful. I mean, get this. I, I think this is actually just a red-white scam. I think this is just scam because you get to Fury or Solitude, turn one with Ephemerate, You've got Mana, Titan, Blood Moon. I mean, if this is, isn't scam, I don't know what is. Is this scam chat, yes or no? This is literally red-white scam. So and I need chat to confirm it. What's the thing of the sideboard, though, against the Emmer player? Because I'm not seeing a bunch of things. I mean, you have explosives. Okay. What else? Yes, I can see some yeah, yes in chat. Totally scam. Yes, thank you very much. And the sideboard contains pretty good tools. Uh, and you need explosives. Excellent. Historically, has been excellent against against Hammer. Can destroy, you know, the Sigada's 8 for 1, Hammer for 1, Giver of Runes, Esper Sentinel, and a bunch of other stuff if played for X equals 1. I mean, I don't think the Ferry will come in because it's quite clunky, but it could maybe come in instead of something else um, because it's still a piece of interaction. 
and let's move on here to the gameplay. Our players are shuffling in, and while they do so on sideboard, let us know, chat, which, which deck are you rooting for here, and also, don't forget to hit the follow button, because it really helps out the stream grow. Let us know if you're enjoying. We always love to, to see some positive comments. Um, and yeah, just, just give us your feedback. We always try to improve the streams and we love having paper magic back and we know modern is such a popular format. Yeah, I've been enjoying this stream immensely, both as a caster and as a person who's just watching the stream because, you know, when I'm off, I'm watching it anyways. I want to see what's happening. I want to see those great games. Thank you, Gashichel 112 You have a fan here. Yes. A member of the community seems to like me. <laughs> I appreciate that. And so, players are shuffling up. Oh, there was one person. Yeah, there was one person who assessed our height best based off of a picture. There is a person on Twitter, like literally today, uh, posted our picture from like the today's day two picture from the beginning of the day and they assessed by looking at the picture how how tall we are and they said I am 172 centimeters mm -hmm. and I'm 170 so they were pretty close they said you are like 155 -ish. I'm 157 who right. took two centimeters out of me don't do that. Yes. I need all the centimeters I can get. I mean, if you give me more, <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. I'm literally a minion. Martin is like 195. So next to Martin user, I literally look like a minion. <laughs> Cute. Thank you, Mr. Simba, for the kind words. We're trying our best to keep you entertained, chat. And uh, we also love what we're doing. So makes it that much easier. Thank you, Caradros87. Yeah, we are just here having some band conversations while our players shuffling in. We are waiting for game number two. Game number one was taken by uh, Jonas here very quickly on Ammer time. And as our players shuffling in and get ready, don't forget this is the winning in for top eight. And top eight gets not only the invite for the regional championship finals in Athens, they also get flight and accommodation. Yeah. So I'm glad we're having a nice chat. We're reading every message, so if you want to tell us something, we see it. We might re not respond, but we see it. So now players are just finishing shuffling up. So I hope like in the next 30 seconds. Okay, actually at, at 43 minutes, we finished the previous game. Now it's 37. So they were, they've been shuffling and sideboarding just as long as the game took, which is kind of funny. Where is Burn? Actually, we haven't seen Burn, which, uh, why do you think uh, decks like Burn even like power, powerless? We haven't seen much of it lately. So, Godin Horde, if that makes you feel better, there is a prowess, like full foil prowess deck. I think either fighting for the top 8 or for top 16, but I, don't, I haven't seen any Burn. And one of the reasons that people side very often is that, first of all, it doesn't have the tools to compete with all these uh, powerful decks right now. And the second, maybe most important, it hasn't really got any upgrades. All those decks get upgrades here and there, but not burn. And here we have a strong start for our Ammer player. Ex oh, Engineer Explosives for Nicholas, and that's, that's very good, entering with one counter. That's going to be able to help Nicholas deal with this Emmer deck, but Urza Saga. So we got a question about bad Merktite's conversion rate. Yeah, so depends how you look at it, because Merktite was 10% day one and also 10% day two, so it kind of maintained representation. Uh, but yeah, out of 100 players, only 10 converted. I think maybe just like people play play Merktide or just copy it of Goldfish and, and decide to play it, which might not be the best decision because it requires, just requires expertise. You can lose on those, you know, tiny edges. You know, you have to you have so many decisions with surveys and considers. So I think it doesn't carry people as much as they think it would. So here we have Saga Trigger getting Construct. 
And does Nicholas have an answer for that? Yeah, that's a very good question because, you know, EE on one is nice, uh, but you have to beat like, you know, two four fours, two five fives, and they grow every single turn. Yeah, those tokens right now are definitely being really scary. But this deck, Boros Obosh, didn't get here without answers for this kind of deck. So let's see what is able to pull out. I wouldn't be surprised if the, like, the general answer for Urza Saga is just Bloodman. But once the, the tokens come in, you just have to play, for example, Solitude with Ephemerate to get rid of it. And to be fair, right now Solitude plus Ephemerate would do the job pretty and, well. And what do you think the Urza Saga is going to get? Uh, probably Hammer. Just and just force the issue. You could find a zero to play around the E on the table, um, but but like depends on what zeros they have. And I assume it's like only soft on Memonite. So I think I'd much rather just try to bonk now for plus ten damage than get an only soft that that survives. Uh, conversion rates. Uh, rhinos. The three color rhinos had a bad conversion, but the four and five color ones had a pretty good. Uh, creativity had a very good conversion because. It was 5% of day one, and it's 23% of day two. So, so I actually saw a tweet about conversion rates, and I think the deck with the most conversion rate at like 28%, but it also didn't have many copies. Let me get those facts for you all. So thank you, by the way, Anna Hell. I'm going to give here the shout out on Twitter, Yahi Anna Hell, because I think they were the ones that did this uh, conversion rate table. Five colors elemental at 28.6%, which was the highest conversion rate, but only had seven copies on day one and two on day, on day two. I think the most impressive one is creativity, because at 60 copies on day one and 14 on day two, that means 23.3% conversion rate, which is huge because that's a much broader uh, number of decks to analyze, since it had a lot day one. And Merktide at 104 decks day one and only 10 day two at a 9.6% conversion rate, which is actually really low. I am particularly interested in the fact that creativity converted so well, even though all those decks now play Hallowed Moonlight, play Engineered Explosives, like all of those decks have, have Orvar. So that's pretty surprising considering those facts. And just for a comparison, because I think this is very interesting, Creativity is at 60 copies on day one, and Rhinos, Temo Rhinos, at 58. So very close, right? But on day two, out of the 60 Creativity decks, we are seeing 14 that made day two. But out of 58 Temo Rhinos on day one, only three made day two. So can you see the difference? 60, 14, 58, 3. So that's a very big difference. Temu Rhinos only had, having 5.2% conversion rate. But four colors, Rhinos, though, having 25%. So uh, why do you think the four color did so much better than the Temu version? I think modern right now is all about the flexible white interaction, you know, leyline binding. And this is what the, the, the different mana base provides you with. Right, so when we say conversion rates, we mean, okay, we had some decks in d day one, uh, so that's the first thing, and we, and we are analyzing how many of those day one decks converted to make day two. So that's, that's the thing. But yeah, um, Scam, I'm not sure what, what Scam's conversion rate is, but I don't think any is playing for the top eight. So, you know, for all the people who hate Scam and, and Merktite, well, this top eight is going to be a treat for you to watch. So now we've got uh, we've got Solitude staying in the battlefield, having previously dim, um, decimated the battlefield thanks to Ephemerate, and now we just got a God on as Fable of the Mirror Breaker making a Shaman token. Animating Moth Nexus, yep. Wow, it's just over. So, okay, we welcome to the bonk town. The game is over. I mean, we blinked. The game is over. Nicholas tapped out for Fable. He wasn't oh. holding up engineered explosives. 